The future of space-based SDI lasers is found in the Alpha Laser, which became operational in April 1989. This is a chemical-based laser. It has the advantage of low power consumption and smaller size. Space-based lasers have the further advantage of no atmospheric distortion and can go straight line to the target. With lethality demonstrated, the next major step is beam control and pointing. As the old joke goes, it's all done with mirrors. The LAMP, or Large Advanced Mirror Program, is designed to achieve this. When operational, LAMP will be several times larger than the Hubble Space Telescope. Even if full lethality is not achieved with a chemical space-based laser, its ability to destroy decoys, especially balloon decoys, thermally tag warheads, and create a velocity change signature on the warhead will make kills by other layers of SDI easier and faster. Ever since an atmospherically corrected laser tracked a booster rocket in 1985, the ability to propagate a laser beam from the ground into space seemed feasible. Laser light is absolutely parallel. A distortion in the atmosphere, like the wavy shimmering you see looking out over the road on a hot summer day, reduces the laser's effectiveness. SDI computers are now calculating the distortion in real time and adjusting the mirror to compensate for such distortion, creating a true and effective laser beam as it emerges from the atmosphere. In February 1990, a Delta II launched both LACE and RME into space. LACE is a two and one half year low power atmospheric compensation experiment to further refine beam distortion issues. RME will demonstrate the ability to reflect a laser beam from a space mirror and point to a target. Such a target may be a series of fighting mirrors, which in turn will divide the beam and aim multiple beams at multiple targets. GBL is not limited in power due to boosting weight limits. One of the more promising paths for ground-based lasers is FEL, or free electron laser. Electrons are jarred loose from their atoms and fed as bundles or electron bullets into a laser beam. Such an approach increases the lethality of the beam while offering the possibility of lower power consumption. This translates into more lasers at the same cost. In this video, we attempted to give you an overview of SDI, only outline its many successes, and look at some of SDI's more interesting systems. Over the next 12 months, a significant number of SDI systems will be tested in a series of VALDEM or validation and demonstration tests. These tests will focus more on full systems and system integration and less on components than in the past several years. Some of the experiments for 1991-92 include the first Brilliant Pebbles intercept, the 60 millimeter hypervelocity gun, the first leap or lightweight exoatmospheric projectile intercept, the first ARIS mid-course discrimination and intercept, the first head-eye intercept of a terminal RV, the first mid-power neutral particle beam demonstration. This one is still on the ground. And finally, the first full-power free electron laser beam demonstration. We'll track all the activities and more and issue our findings in the next.